How's it going everybody? So in this video, we're going to be going over my top favorite picks on herbs and supplements to dramatically improve your depression, okay? So these are herbs and supplements that have a significant effect on boosting mood, boosting motivation, boosting your pleasure in life so that when you do the activities that are supposed to feel good to you, feel motivating and inspiring, and inspiring, you actually feel the way your brain is supposed to feel when doing such activities, okay? And you, and before I even begin to list these things, keep in mind, um, depression can definitely be conquered, but it also requires um, a holistic approach. Addressing the mindset and your overall paradigm and beliefs in which you uh, experience the world through that's fundamental for depression um, you know your presumptions about other people and your beliefs about life and your beliefs about yourself that is a fundamental key you must take care of um, your nutrition is absolutely vitally important there are many nutritional factors uh, essential vitamins minerals and fatty acids that most people don't get and can contribute towards depression and um, there are many other things to talk about, so that is important because if you don't get those things taken care of, these herbs will probably still give you a significant benefit, just so you all know, but not nearly as much as if you were to conquer the entire picture as well as doing these herbs. Herbs and supplements are great because even if you don't have your entire life on track as far as boosting your mood and things like that and healing your depression, um, herbs and supplements are similar to pharmaceuticals in a way that when you take them, they can help you be more effective at actually living your life effectively and doing the habits, changing your habits and changing your behaviors and taking the action necessary to resolve your chronic uh, severe depression. Uh, but the difference is that while pharmaceuticals can help you live effectively and, and do what you need to do, Pharmaceuticals are not meant to be taken long term, contrary to popular belief. Pharmaceuticals are meant, number one, in severe cases where it's a life or death situation. If you didn't take the medications, you might commit suicide or something. That's very bad, and you need to seek help, definitely, uh, in that case, professional help. Um, but also, medication's most effective usage is uh, somebody who's, who's going to talk therapy and trying to work through their problems and they're trying to get a better job, uh, improve their relationships and their, their, their social life and improve their uh, you know, self-development work, you know, their beliefs about people and things like that and basically trying to improve themselves and work on themselves. Medications can kind of help you work through your problems, uh, whereas without them it's a lot harder, right? Well, herbs and supplements, especially the ones I'm going to be talking about in this video, can do the same exact thing and a lot of times to the same degree. And in some cases, there's actually studies that directly can uh, directly compares some of these herbs to common depres uh, depression uh, treatments, common depression drugs, antidepressants, and show even more effect, more benefit from the herbs than the, uh, the drug and placebo-controlled trials. Uh, so, um, these herbs can help you work through problems similar to pharmaceuticals, but also can be taken over the long term. A lot of times due to some of the other side benefits that you get and the fact that they're generally uh, considered safe for long term usage in the proper doses. Okay, So we're going to be going over some of the most profound ones that are most likely to give most people benefit and specifically ones that are more healthy um, and are less prone to certain uh, negative effects. Okay, so uh, let's, let's get into that. So the number one most effective herb or supplement for uh, depression is definitely rhodiola rosea. I highly recommend you watch my videos on effective doses uh, because more is not always better in this case. A lot of times less is more. There is a, a, a dose-dependent bell-shaped curve when it comes to dose response. Uh, 
where the lower doses of rhodiola rosea tend to be the most effective and higher doses can actually cause the opposite. Um, but rhodiola rosea is amazing for boosting your focus, boosting your motivation, boosting your productivity, boosting your energy and your zest for life. It's very common when people take rhodiola for them to be able to be more present with the things that they're doing, to feel more pleasure from the activities that they're engaging in, and to be more fully engaged in life itself, and to feel more motivated to do the things that you need to do during the day and not really feel the normal stress. Rhodiola is uh, most commonly claimed to fame for um, uh, being like an anti-stress herb. Generally, it's uh, used to remove fatigue, even in sleep-deprived states. It tends to uh, not necessarily boost energy in like a caffeine stimulant way, but just removes fatigue and improves your motivation and desire to drive forward uh, while also having profound focus benefits. Um, there's a lot of people that that insists that, th that it's um, more power that's more powerful as powerful as ADHD treatments. Uh, you'll find a lot of experiences like that. Uh, I have videos going deep into detail. Uh, mo general dosage is about 250 milligrams of a standardized extract, which is very important. Taken once or twice a day. Um, 3% rosavins, 1% solidroside content is the extract you want because there's other extracts that have the opposite, 3% uh, solidrosides, and you don't want that because that can have a different effect. Um, really, really quick dive into mechanism of action uh, has benefits for uh, um, benefits on the expression of um, its mechanism of action is uh, uh, increasing the expression of 5-HT1 receptor, uh, basically a serotonin receptor, as well as uh, norepinephrine and over time improving the recycling and the sensitization or the uh, of dopamine and potentially increasing the uh, density of the dopamine receptor itself. Um, Specific dopamine receptors, uh, you'll have to watch my video where I give a deep dive into the research. Uh, also, uh, in improving the simulation or the release of beta endorphins, which are kind of like those molecules that are responsible for that high feeling you get after exercise, okay? So, yeah, um, to keep it kind of short. So... Anyway, Rhodiola Rosea, highly recommend, um, 250 milligrams. I think Nature's Way is a great brand. Um, I've tried many different brands, Now Foods, um, this NutriCost powder. I also have a tincture over here. As you can tell, I'm a really big fan of Rhodiola, and obviously I'm not getting paid by any uh, companies because I'm using all these different companies, right? But really amazing stuff. Number one, number one, number one. Um, so the second herb or supplement on my list is definitely lion's mane extract. Okay, so lion's mane is a uh, is a medicinal mushroom that I mean it's pretty trendy these days, but uh, I've been using it on and off for a number of years. Uh, its most common claim to fame, though, is improving focus, productivity, and memory, and uh, improving the functioning of the brain and cognition. It's generally seen more in regards to its uh, benefits on ADHD and focus. Um, but one of the most profound kind of benefits you'll find, if you use a good extract, there's a lot of absolute crappy products like that are not worth your money on the, on the market. There's very specific standards you need to look for when you're looking for a lion's mane. Uh, but a good one will make well like basically I gave it to my mom like over the weekend for the first time I gave her like a teaspoon of lion's mane and uh, She went from being just kind of really gloomy and kind of well not gloomy But just like low energy and just like kind of scatterbrained To like literally like 15 minutes later when we're deep in conversation It's like a light bulb turned on her brain and she's just like Chatterbox all of a sudden, like yada yada blah, blah blah blah. Oh my god, life is good, and she's like really curious about um, everything, and just like really deep into. 
she she got really engaged in our conversation and and like smiling on her face just spontaneously um very very noticeable for me as an outsider seeing the the overall facial expressions and the aura and energy coming from my mom changing and then like 30 minutes later i asked mom like mom have you uh what did you did you notice any difference after you take lion's mane it's like yeah actually now that you mention it it feels like i got my glasses adjusted everything in life is looks more clearer is exactly her words uh and she even went as far as like we were at like a coffee shop and she was she was about to throw her cup away and she stopped for a second and she started reflecting on the process of recycling cups and like why recycling paper cups is different from plastic and so clearly she suddenly had a very deep curiosity and engagement in life that that would normally not be there without lion's mane it's not just my mom but most people live life like a zombie where everything is very mundane and kind of just uninteresting and you will hear anecdotal experiences of many many people when they take lion's mane where they say exactly that like literally your interest level of life goes from like a two or a three all the way up to a seven to a nine sometimes so most common reported benefits of lion's mane as far as depression are going to be feeling more inspired more kind of like motivated but in like a euphoric type of way and more sociable like you just feel more uh like desiring to talk to people more friendly more e like more easygoing in a sense that like you actually enjoy talking to people you actually enjoy doing productive work okay and personally i think combining rhodiola and lion's mane is probably just an amazing stack because they both work similarly the only difference is that rhodiola is a more visceral kind of like physical boost type feeling whereas lion's mane is more of like a mental uh neurotransmitter type boost if that makes any sense just to kind of describe the subjective difference um but uh, lion's mane will uh, it will objectively over time improve your memory and improve your focus without a shadow of a doubt. Uh, and if you take enough lion's mane and a good dose, like you will, uh, and a good extract, a high quality one, you will definitely notice a difference, legit, like within thirty to sixty minutes. Okay, and if you don't feel it, like I would say, it's probably not a high quality extract. Okay. Now, one more thing, though, is that, um, is that uh, rhodiola, just to go, kind of go back to that because I kind of missed some things. Rhodiola also boosts your memory without a shadow of a doubt, um, but mostly over the long term. You'll just notice your memory gets better. And both of these herbs improve sleep and uh, relieve stress and anxiety as well. In lion's mane, I think the relief of anxiety is very profound. Um so little a little talk on lion's mane and effective um brands okay my recommendation is to get the terra soul lion's mane the four to one hot water extract okay the brand is terra soul t-e-r-r-a-s-o-u-l i don't have the physical product with me because i actually just gave it to my mom a couple days ago i gave her like cause i had like another like three quarters of a package left. And I figured, well, my mom loved it so much. She needs it way more than I do because I have all these other herbs I take and she's pretty stressed and uh, that seemed to really work well with her. And, you know, I love sharing my passion for tonic herbs and I feel like that will really benefit my mother. So I gave that the rest to her. Anyway, uh, Terrasol, very, very good brand. If you take Terrasol, that's the brand we were using. I, I'm confident that is going to give you what lion's mane really is, right? So Terrasol, lion's mane, I would take a whole a whole teaspoon uh, at first and see how you how you feel, and then maybe try two teaspoons like next time you try it. And uh, if you notice uh, feel any, any kind of negative effects like feelings of tiredness, anxiety, or anything like that, which is not commonly normal, but you might want to lower the dose again sometimes less is more and lion's mane you might do best with a fourth of a teaspoon to a half a teaspoon 
But I do recommend taking the full one teaspoon first because that seems to be like turns on the light switch type of effects, right? So these are the first two, okay? And the and the thing about lion's mane and rhodiola, I mean, if you l just do a quick Google, Google search, right, Dr. Google, and you look at any articles talking about these things, which typically they might, you know, exaggerate, but it's not just the boost in mood and motivation and focus that these things have. They have a whole list of other benefits that kind of like build up over time. Uh, everything from blood sugar, blood pressure, increasing uh, brain drive neurotropic factor, which is responsible for organizing the scatterbrain file cabinet that is your mind and your thoughts over time and literally creating uh, neuroplastic, like physical connections in your mind that normally happens during sleep where different concepts and different things you learn during the day starts to connect more easily and effortlessly. These herbs increase that. They increase, the re especially lion's mane is known for increasing the regeneration of, of nerves in and of itself, neurogenesis. Um, showing pretty strong promise for, uh, in, you know, possibly being a treatment for things like dementia and or Alzheimer's. Um, so that is why these are the first two, right? Um, okay. So those are some pretty profound, um, ones. And these are universal across the board, whether you're a man, a male or a female, these will be very beneficial. Um, so I'll also say, obviously, take, uh, definitely work with high-dose omega-3, EPA, and DHA fish oil. Um, these have been shown over and over again to have uh, noticeable benefits to a certain magnitude of effect on improving mood and depression outcomes. And uh, you'll find a lot of people who will, who will kind of try to spread fear about it and caution against it. Those fears are unfounded. Um, I would say a minimum of two grams, 2,000 milligrams of EPA, okay, omega-3. So whatever dose, however many tablespoons of fish oil or capsules of fish oil you need to take that gets you to that 2,000 milligrams of EPA, whatever DHA content comes with it, that is a dose. And I recommend taking a combined DHA and EPA omega-3 uh, fish oil, preferably a high quality liquid brand because capsules, I just, it's just too easy to get the wrong product uh, or a fake product. Um, anyway, so there's other things out there. Um, things like Makuna Purins that uh, directly boost dopamine, but those are, have shaky results and have a high potential for negative outcomes and for developing tolerance. There's things like maca root, which I've talked about before, which can also improve your motivation and your zest for life and your mood. And again, it has shaky results, and I wouldn't put confidence in it, and a lot of people build tolerance. There's things like ashwagandha that many people swear by, but ashwagandha can oftentimes actually increase feelings of depression. And ashwagandha's most common and effective application is anti-anxiety and sleep. So I wouldn't recommend ashwagandha for depression as well either, especially because it can actually directly um, kind of like cause depression and apathy in many people. Uh, L-tyrosine is pretty effective at boosting dopamine, motivation, and drive. But again, it also might have potential for building a tolerance. Um, but I use it on and off. Uh, usually I'll kind of do uh, 750 milligrams of L-tyrosine. For a number of weeks and when I start to notice a tolerance and doesn't work anymore I'll just remove it and usually it takes at least two months to kind of like remove a tolerance sometimes it just doesn't work at all uh, and then there's other things out there uh, alpha GPC I think is a great uh, kind of um, compound that you can take to boost focus productivity and motivation it can kind of boost the functioning of dopamine as well as acetylcholine. And it seems to just be like a good source of um, acetylcholine uh, in general that, or choline in general, that is just basically a central nutrient, let alone like a nootropic type of mood boosting thing. So it's not something that can possibly build a tolerance or anything, but it can kind of have 
negative side effects if it builds up in your system and you have too much. And it can build up over time. So you want to stay at a low or to moderate dosages. And if you start to notice a tolerance or negative effects, just remove it for a while and, you know, and bring it back. Just keep in mind it's a nutrient and not like a therapy that can build a tolerance like lacuna or tyrosine or maca. Uh, other things would be like, so if you're a male and you have a hormonal imbalance, you might want to look into um, polyrachis ant uh, combined with pine pollen and nettle root extract. So uh, these three in combination are really potent way of boosting androgens if you have low testosterone or even if you don't in a healthy male it'll improve the motivation the drive the desire to exercise and uh, just the overall feelings of motivation and zest for life that is normally associated with positive um, hormone balance and in Chinese medicine these are known to boost Jing which is your vital essence and life force which is also associated with your sex drive and your motiv your motivational drive for life, which are directly correlated. And so um, polyrachis black ant extract, uh, preferably from Hyperion herbs, highly recommend that, or Lost Empire herbs, but I think Hyperion is better. It's more affordable, and I've used it, and it actually works. Uh, it is a whole food source of ectosteroids, which is a natural compound found in insects, because literally ground up ants, that have kind of like low level boost uh, androgen boosting qualities. Uh, and it will definitely boost your sex drive, your semen volume, and uh, your aggression and make you just like really want to lift weights and be physical. Uh, combine that with something like uh, pine pollen, which is kind of like a plant source of, um, of like plant ster steroid or androgens, plant androgens. Again, these are not like powerful steroids per se that make you like considered like a not natty athlete or something, but they have powerful benefits that can make you feel like you're like on some shit basically. And, uh, so nettle root extract. Again, Hyperion Herbs is a brand I recommend. It's a 16 to 1 extract, I believe. Uh, if you take the uh, high-quality extract, standardized in the right amount, uh, can uh, also, I believe it, uh, uh, it's a 5-alpha, it's a, it's a aromatized, aromatase inhibitor. So it prevents the testosterone you have from being aromatized into estrogen. And so over time, when you take these kind of like low level whole food source androgenic boosting herbs you combine them with a or, uh, with nettle root which is a whole food source of uh, aromatase inhibitor what you get is kind of like a very healthy and subtle balancing um kind of like stack for optimizing hormone health uh that where where if you take pharmaceutical grade like androgens and steroids and shit like that very, very easy to like end up with negative health consequences, right? But when you optimize your hormones with this strategy, what it, there, once you get into the healthy range, it doesn't stimulate beyond um, what is necessary. And so this is a very powerful way of optimizing your hormones to relieve depression and boost your mood and energy and motivation for life without going freaking crazy and with drugs and things that can potentially cause heart disease and shit like that, right? Um, and generally speaking, even if you're not like diagnosed with low testosterone or something, I found that these herbs can definitely boost your mood and motivation and drive and, and all of these things in a way that uh, like even if you're not low in testosterone, uh, it can optimize those qualities. So I highly recommend so you give that a shot. Uh, beyond that, there are stimulants out there like Yohimbi know, bark extract uh, and even things like ephedra. I would highly recommend you not get into ephedra. That's like hardcore shit, and I've never tried ephedra before. But I've used Yohimbi on and off. Yohimbi, especially like a Yohimbi bark extract. In particular, you need to really be careful with the dosage. There's a very narrow, narrow range of effective dose where if you take too little, you won't really fill it. 
if you take too much, your heart will feel like it's beating out of your chest and you have a lot of negative potential side effects. Um, I've had clients and athletes who uh, they'll take a high dose and they, they, they'll feel just great, you know, and they don't feel too bad on the heart. I have others who are like, holy shit, I feel like I took some like crazy shit, like, right? I feel like I'm on drugs. You feel cracked out, right? Uh, you'll hear me bark extract, very, very well documented effects on boosting sex drive and kind of like uh, circulation and blood flow to, to, to the genitals, um, to the sexual organs. But also it has very profound benefits on motivation and uh, mental focus and productivity because it boosts the, the, it boosts neuroepinephrine, um, but it, but also adrenaline. So, you know, you'll be simulated and you'll feel pretty pumped up, but you'll also feel pretty focused. So, you know, and uh, it's not like caffeine in the way that you feel jittery and, you know, maybe um, kind of burnt out. It's just a pumped up, like turned on type of feeling, right? So it's it's a different kind of pumped up jitteriness than caffeine. And I think it's more powerful than caffeine, and it works through different, uh, completely different pathways. So for the most part, these are going to be the main kind of things I'm going to mention out here, provided there are a lot of herbs. There's also like um, uh, reishi mushroom um, and things like cordyceps. I mean, I can get into a lot of things that have very prof- – and gynostema – Ginseng, Siberian ginseng, also known as Eulithero, Panax, red ginseng, and even something as simple as like yerba mate or a very high quality uh, green tea or even a green tea extract or a matcha powder and something like theanine. There are a lot of things that I have found to have a noticeable benefit on mood and relieving depression, but in this video, I'm focusing on the most profound the, uh, substances that are like a pharmaceutical, like you will fucking feel it, right? And there's, again, there's other things like Tonka Ali, which is more hormonal. And there's things like Shilaji, right? But I haven't experimented with Shilaji enough. And I'll say Tonka Ali is a bit uh, of, a, of a shaky subject that <laughs> might not work, but might actually be the best thing ever for some people. So, we're going to stop there. If you're interested in, in more kind of like uh, supplements and herbs that I haven't even like mentioned in this video, let me know because I, I have tried so many herbs and supplements and researched the fuck out of them. Uh, so I could probably make a, a list of 100 different herbs and remedies and explain an like a, a four-page essay on each of them. So leave your question and comments down below. And uh, I'll talk to you next time. Oh, and I almost forgot high-dose caffeine also works well. Uh, but, yeah, I'll talk to you all next time.